Hello. <coughs> Hello and welcome to uh, lecture 10, the final lecture in the course. Um, this is the lecture on violence. Now, to begin this lecture, I'm going to borrow the example uh, Slavoj Žižek gives in his uh, work violence and to, today we're focusing on uh, chapter one of this work SOS violence um, the example begins uh, uh, the example given is a gentleman um, who is uh, leaving a factory and uh, the supervisors of the, of the factory are convinced that he's stealing something but they keep going through his wheelbarrow and looking for what it is they suspect him of stealing and then they realize all of a sudden that he's stealing wheelbarrows themselves now um, the point of this uh, example is to take a step back it's only when we stop and take a step back and look at things anew that do we see that the seemingly normal uh, or everyday aspects of this uh, example <clears throat> or of our experiences um, might actually be the very problem that we're searching for. Um, so we're going to uh, try to take a step back and look at things that are apparently acceptable, socially acceptable, ethically acceptable, politically acceptable, and look at the underlying violences that uh, exist in these these examples. So first of all, we are going to look at the difference between um, subjective and objective violence. <clears throat> now, we have subjective violence is performed by a clearly identifiable agent. Uh, the, per the perturbation of the normal state of things. So when things are perturbed. So we can see subjective violence very easily. It's, for example, someone walks up to me in the streets and punches me in the face. This is identifiable violence, a clearly identifiable agent. This is one subject committing a violent act. Um, but <clears throat> we are looking um, at the comparison now between subjective and objective violence. We look at objective violence itself is, some, is a type of violence that's performed by an enigmatic agent, or sometimes if an, if an agent at all, so sometimes not even an agent. It is invisible because it sustains the very zero level standard against which we see things as subjectively violent. So what these violences that exist objectively are what create the social conditions or social norms that we readily accept as being okay or being everyday or being standard. For example, if we go back 200 years ago or before any uh, civil rights movements, um, how women might have been treated in the past, this was deemed as being acceptable. Why? Because women were seen in the in the norm of society as being inferior to men therefore they had their place and so on and so forth now this seeming apparent norm we have the uh, wisdom now of post-modernity to see that this is unacceptable but uh, and this is a violence towards women um, but uh, back 200 years ago um, it's this very standard um, that established the norm, this separation of men and women uh, giving gender roles and whatnot, different uh, you know, specific uh, roles to play uh, in society. <clears throat> so, um, however, this object, or sorry, this violence is manifest in a physical object. Okay, so we need to be able to see uh, this is how. So this is the object, uh, objective part of, of the violence. We see the object, and this this underlying um, framework of norms uh, produces this object. And again, this is our transcendental materialism. Okay, we can see how the value or or, or these transcendent. Uh, these values that exist outside of the material itself um, are placed there upon it 
So, if we can, for our first example of this idea of violence, um, is this, uh, of, of objective violence, sorry, um, is uh, perhaps capitalism. Again, we have money, okay, look at the underlying violences that are communicated by the standard normalized capitalist system that we have. Uh, for ourselves. And again, we see these norms and values um, manifest objectively in the idea of money. <clears throat> now, um, it is often the case that uh, the objective and subjective violences, uh, while corresponding and uh, conflict with one another. For example, um, what is seemingly apparently objectively okay um, can subjectively not be okay. Um, sorry, a very brutal way of putting it. But the example can be the Irish government uh, or, or Ireland as a nation. For the last decade uh, with the Celtic Tiger and the economic boom, we have given the appearance uh, worldwide that we are a very strong um, country um, and it is all we've always had uh, records of being you know the uh, most expensive and this was then ju tried to just be justified back to the people as uh, saying oh it's okay look at how modern we are and this very uh, image of Ireland being okay but while all the people knew in Ireland there was always this kind of shared sentiment that things weren't okay and eventually things would crash and this that we could see um, that we are experiencing now so uh, and it's now only being revealed uh, that, that the subjective is permeating now to the objective level um, that we can see that th this is crashing in and that Ireland isn't uh, okay but the image of Ireland being a prosperous and secure economic nation um, in over the last decade has been this objective uh, presentation, whereas the subjective uh, Irish uh, sentiment um, in terms of uh, living condition, uh, the subjective experience, the experience of every individual person has been one uh, with slightly more uh, suspicion or unease, unrest, because of a fear or a looming uh, possibility of economic crash. Although the government never accepted this and never uh, communi uh, communicated these fears, they always communicated a strong economy, which eventually we saw crashed. And it's, of course, now with... Uh, all this revealing of the lack of funds with the likes of AIB, that more and more of this uh, this objective uh, image is crashing. Of course, we've seen this with the with the fall of capitalism. <clears throat> now, we have t within this separation of symbolic, uh, or sorry, subjective and objective uh, violence, or. Uh, uh, so yes, yeah, so we are dealing with the, with the term of violence, but we can see how um, there are even these images. The, 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 this uh, this difference. It doesn't necessarily have to just be violent uh, violent examples, um, but we can see the separation and the distance between subjectivity and objectivity here. Um, so. Um, in terms of violence itself that we can continue and we're going to be analyzing these examples, these violent examples. So within the framework of objective violence there are two identifiable types, symbolic violence and systemic violence. So here's systemic, we're going back to almost our, our, our systems theory, or, so we have a, a type of functionalism here as well. Okay. So um, symbolic violence is inherent to language in two ways. Okay. So of course we're dealing with this idea of the symbolic order, how language is constructing our world. So how is it language within the symbol itself can be violent? Okay. Well, first of all, the more identifiable speech, speech acts, uh, for example, racism or political correctness. Um, here, <coughs> abusive language um, is communicated outrightly with the intent of being violent. Okay, it's a very simple uh, example of uh, symbolic violence. Okay? The word itself is a violent one. Um, it, it is meant to be hurtful. Um, the second example is the imposition of universal meaning and the ripping from reality 